Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial. Uh, this is going to be a bit of a longer tutorial. There's going to be a couple examples here, but we're going to be talking about uh, how to take projections and uh, move them into UV space and a couple of examples of what we can do with that technique. So this is the last example I'll go over, but just to show you guys, it's kind of, we have like this manhole cover flying away and like turning into a cloth. Um, so some kind of weird effect and leaving a hole behind. And obviously our, our footage is something just like this. So we're kind of taking projections and baking their movement uh, into uh, a moving object. So that's kind of one way we can use these, but there's actually a number of ways. So what I'm gonna do is split this video into a couple different chapters. And so we'll talk about uh, a couple different things here. But first, if you haven't seen these videos, I'd recommend you check these out, uh, you know, like the basics. Uh, the fundamentals of what are UVs and you know just understanding those basic concepts before we move into something more advanced like this video. So these are the things we're going to talk about. In the first chapter we'll talk about um, why it's useful to work in UV space, a couple of reasons. So we can blend multiple projections in UV space, we can stabilize extract textures. So that will be the first part here uh, and I'll use a shot down here that I've taken with a drone. Uh, and then we have another one that is removing perspective and working to the space. So that's another use uh, use case for this uh, sort of workflow. And you'll see why that's useful. And then we'll talk about lastly, how to bake projections onto an object, which is what we saw just in that quick video there and how to patch in high resolution textures into projections if you need to. Um, so there's a bunch to cover there. And yeah, we'll start talking about it with the first one. So if we look at this shot, uh, just to reiterate uh, the basic concept, you guys already know this probably, but you know a basic projection looks like this. We have our footage uh, that's undistorted, and we're basically projecting that onto a card that's been placed in the proper position, um, you know, which you can determine from the point cloud or the other methods I've talked about uh, before. So you can basically open this up, and we can see uh, this is a projection. So if we were to play this footage, and we give it a second here to cache. So you can see Nuke is doing a cache here. And if I scrub through, we'll actually be able to preview uh, the projection. So we can see the projection is rotating on this card. But so what's interesting about this is if you notice, um, let's just play the footage first so we can see the footage. The footage uh, is this kind of drone shot rotating um, over this landscape. And there are some kind of violent turns in the footage. So you know, that's something you could actually remove with this technique. You know, you could use a planar track in some of this specific case scenario. You could use a planar track to stabilize and uh, remove motion as well. But I want to cover the 3D uh, UV method because it, it expands much further uh, what we can do. So, so we see this thing kind of turning here. And what's interesting is if you look in 3D space, uh, you'll notice uh, it's kind of stabilized. Like we see the frame rotating, but the image itself is staying in place on the card. And that's because the, the camera is projecting the image and the image is moving with the camera, but it's happening. Uh, basically, if you place this 3D object or 3D card in the right spot, it's going to look like everything's kind of stabilized. So yeah, it's kind of a glitchy cache here. Uh, hard to play kind of in 3D. That's kind of a nukes uh, thing there, but yeah, you can see that basically the frame rotates around uh, meanwhile it's staying in position. So uh, one other thing to note with this, if I can fix my cache here, uh, one other thing to note, so since it's a projection, obviously if we move this card around, you see that that image is moving around. So it's a projection, it's not in texture space. And this is really a key concept uh, as we move further into this kind of video is you need to understand the difference. Uh, a texture, uh, just to remind you guys, uh, obviously if you stick a texture on a uh, card and you move it around, uh, it's not gonna move. It's gonna stay on the It's gonna stay on the card. So basically what we wanna do in this, in this kind of video here is to convert this projection into UV space and make it a texture. And then you'll see uh, the potential of what you can actually do with that. So the way we do this is we take the projection and what we can do in the scanline render is switch it to uh, UV. So there's this little box here. If you double click the scanline render uh, and we switch it from perspective, which is the normal uh, result we get from the scanline. So if we were to go back and just look at the normal result, um, give it a second to load here. Uh, if we look before and after, before, after, 
there's no difference. So we're basically projecting it from the camera. We're not doing any frame holds or anything. So really you shouldn't see any difference because the camera is just following uh, what's happening there. But if we uh, switch this projection mode to UV, uh, it's gonna render out the texture space of the card. So what that means is basically it's looking at the UVs of this card, which is, uh, again, go check out those videos, but we have a square card and now it's just looking at the texture. So basically, um, that's just something to consider. So it, it doesn't even matter really where the camera is. Um, so like, for example, if I move this camera, move this camera here and then we move in UV space, you see, it's just, it's basically just taking the texture and rendering it out. Uh, and basically what that allows us to do is now we're working in texture space. Uh, so one thing before I start talking about this, uh, it's useful to, uh, when you're rendering in UV space, so in projection mode UV, you want to render in squares because usually uh, a, a UV layout is going to be at least for, you know, you don't want stretched UVs basically. So you don't want to be changing formats and all kinds of stuff. Really, if you're in UV space, you want to be working in squares. So there's two things you need to do. You need to plug in a background into a square format, which is, uh, so I just plugged in a 4K square. And I also went to the card and I turned off image aspect. So that's not gonna grab the 16 by nine aspect ratio, which is kind of this wider uh, sort of footage here. It's not gonna grab that aspect ratio. So if I click that, you'll see that it actually changes the shape of our card and it makes it not a square. So we don't wanna be doing that uh, and switching back and forth. So always just check that off if you're planning to go to UV space. Uh, if you're working with uh, 3D geometry, a little bit more complex, you won't need to worry about it. But if you're working with planes, Something you need to think about. Okay, so now that we've kind of we've kind of talked about that, we're in texture space. This is kind of what the workflow looks like. So we have like the projection render into UV space, and then we can do our work in texture space here, and then we can uh, reapply this as a as a texture rather than a projection. So that might be confusing, but I'm gonna go over it. So we'll just talk it through. So what's one thing that we can do with this? So now that this is in UV space, it's kind of stabilized. So if I were to kind of play this through, you'll notice that instead of our whole uh, video rotating, like the original footage, uh, the, the frame is actually rotating around the landscape rather than the whole thing rotating. So you see nothing's moving, it's kind of stabilized. Uh, and this is really useful for uh, kind of like matte painting. So if we wanted to matte paint on this landscape, you know, we don't want to work on a footage that's rotating like crazy. We can stabilize it, put it into this 2D space, and we could bring something like this into Photoshop. So we could render this picture out, uh, do a matte painting on it, and then we can reapply the motion. So that's kind of what we're doing here. So one other reason this is useful is because uh, we can take different um, parts of the video. So let's say the start part of the video, I have it frame held here. Uh, on the, the starting frame. So 1979 is the starting frame and 2100 is the end frame. So you see that uh, there's some different coverage happening here. We have, just give it a second to load. We have this one that, that you don't see the, the green landscape up here. And then we have this one that has the green landscape up here, but it's missing the other side. So what we can do is we could blend those together. So if I do a key mix and blend those two frame holds together, you see now we can see more of the entire landscape. So kind of what we're doing is blending multiple viewpoints of the camera and we're getting this overall texture of the entire environment. And the reason this is useful is because you don't want to have to, you know, paint a map painting from multiple uh, different angles if you don't have to. Sometimes you have to, but by building your map painting out or by building your uh, seen into kind of a UV space if it's possible, uh, like in this case it is, uh, we could we could do this and now we could just export this or do a map painting directly on this. So we have both parts of the picture. We have it and we could just frame hold this. So this would just be a texture now and then we could reapply that uh, onto the card. So that's kind of the concept. So let's just see exactly uh, what happens here. So if I take a roto paint, let's take a roto paint here. I think I already have it and merge it over. So I'm gonna get rid of the frame holds for now. I'm just gonna show a really basic example of sticking something. So basically what I did is I just drew, um, let's just go here. So we have this thing, uh, we can plug in the roto paint background and then hit the little replace button. 
Uh, it's a really useful trick, by the way, if you guys don't know that. If you do that, all it does is, um, I'll quickly explain it. All it does is if I have a road of paint, you notice that the default format is uh, Ultra HD 4K because that's the uh, format the drone footage is in. But you see it doesn't match our kind of UV space square. So I don't want to go here and reformat and do a bunch of stuff like that to kind of match this uh, format, which is 4K square. So I don't want to worry about that. So I, all I do is just plug in the background here, uh, hit the little place button, and you see it grabs the format from the thing coming into it. Uh, and that's all it's doing there. So we can plug that in now and we see uh, now we can easily draw on stuff and it's it's matching the format. Uh, I just like to keep these road paints separate rather than keeping them in the stream and you'll see why in just a second here. So now that we've got that, uh, what we want to do is uh, if we render this through the same thing. So basically what you do is you have your projection set up, go into UV space, do your stuff here, map painting, projections, whatever you're doing. Uh, and then copy that same geometry. So we have a card and we'll plug that into the result. But you notice we're not using the project 3D. We're not using a projection anymore. We're using this as a texture. So it's going directly into the picture. So if you've done this right and you go through the scanline render, it should map perfectly. So if you compare, uh, let's compare to the undistorted because that's what, so we have this and we have this. Uh, give it a second here. So you see that the line and everything is matching. Uh, and then that would kind of stick. So if I were to play this through, uh, you can play through the sequence here, give it a second to load, and now all of our stuff is sticking. Uh, and this is pretty big footage, so that's why it's a bit slow to cache. Um, but you guys can see the kind of example there. It sticks as we step through, uh, and that's a good way to work. So one other thing I want to mention is really uh, if you're doing projections and stuff, you don't want to re project the entire original footage um, and because you're going to basically blur it a little bit because um, every time you put something through a transform or a scanline render uh, you're kind of losing a little bit of detail so we don't want to take this entire landscape add our stuff on top and then put it through the scanline render rather what you can do is take the format the 4k square and we'll paste it here and then we'll just uh, once we're done doing our work we'll just switch it to uh, from the mainstream into the uh, reformat here. And so all we're doing is we're only putting our changes out and then we'll merge that over as a layer. And so that's gonna be uh, kind of maintaining the original image quality. We're not gonna put this entire, all these pixels through the whole scanline render. We're only gonna take the changes or the matte painting or whatever we're doing and merge that over as a layer. Um, so it's really useful to work this way because we could work in UV space we can do our work here, but then when we're done, we have all of our, uh, let's say, let's just move this over for a second here. So let's say we have a bunch of, you know, roto paints or uh, stuff going on here. We're merging it over. Once we're done, we can just switch that to the reformat and then just make sure, uh, you know, basically like what I said. So that's kind of the concept of the introduction of why this is useful. Uh, basically, it's really great for sticking stuff. It's really great for, uh, doing some other stuff. So let's talk about the other examples here. Uh, another example, we have remove perspective and work in 2D space. So this one, I didn't do a 3D track. I just took a still image and uh, I just lined up a card uh, into that. So we can see that uh, that's kind of here. So if we zoom in, we can see our kind of uh, tiles here and they're going into the perspective and the card matches the perspective. Uh, so if we render that now into UV space, um, so if you go to normal perspective, let's just show kind of compare. Normal perspective is just going to be, you know, your image projected. Uh, but if we switch it to UV, you see that uh, we're rendering basically the top down view of this square. Um, and we are kind of stretching it because this is actually a rectangle. Um, so, you know, one thing you could do if you wanted to be more cautious, you could make this a square because UVs are kind of squares. So you're kind of wasting uh, resolution there. Um, but you could do it that way if you want to keep like the proportions. Um, but in this instance, it's fine to kind of keep it uh, sort of a just like stretch rectangle. But basically what you're doing, okay, so we're back in the 4K square. We made sure to turn off the image aspect and we have this sort of tiles here. Um, and this is a great way to, you know, do some effects or we could change some of these tiles. Uh, maybe we have a picture of a tile. We could just easily put the tile uh, 
on any of these. And um, if we were doing this normally, we would have to corner pin a bunch of stuff and you know have to squeeze the textures and try to get the perspective and doing it a bunch of different ways and projecting it. Uh, it's just annoying, you know. It's not it's not a good way to work. So if you hop into UV space, um, do the changes here. So we can just take like a texture or something like this, stick it over one of these tiles, and then as we render it back out, you'll see that uh, the perspective is already grabbed. And obviously, you could uh, if there's some defocus and stuff like that, you could chuck it, and you could you know slightly match those type of things as well. So you can lower the quality if it gets too sharp. Um, but this is really great because imagine if our camera starts walking up these stairs and looking down at these, um, this texture is going to work because it's high resolution. Um, something you'll see is if, if I were to work in this perspective and I were to project a bunch of different little changes, like if I were to work from here and projecting a bunch of stuff, uh, if we walk up the stairs and look down at it, you're going to see stretching from the projection and um, you could project from that top view and that's something you can do, but there are some instances where you want to work in UV space because you'll maintain texture quality and you won't get stretching like a normal projection. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. It's just, it's basically, it's just easier uh, and you can have a little bit more control over texture quality. So that's another example, uh, getting rid of perspective and uh, doing that sort of thing. So now I'm going to go into a longer example here. I'm going to do a quick model build. Uh, of this kind of piece of geometry to show you another removing perspective and why it's useful because we can actually run textures through uh, different angles. So I'm going to do a real quick camera track here and then I'll uh, continue the video because uh, I'm not going to make a camera tracking tutorial. So let me just pause here, do a camera track, and then we'll get back to it. All right, guys, so I've done a real quick camera track and we can see our point cloud here. So I've exported these separately, our undistort and our camera. Uh, so we can get our undistorted footage and we can get our camera. We don't really need the point cloud, uh, I don't think, uh, beyond this. So uh, next thing we're going to do is uh, we'll take our footage and we'll plug in a model builder node. Uh, I don't use the model builder that often. Usually I will export to Maya and just because it's easier to model and sort of do UVs, you can do it in Blender as well. Um, I don't think the free version Nuke allows you to export Geo, if I'm correct. Um, so you would have to do your 3D track in Blender or something like that uh, to be able to work in 3D outside of Nuke. But that's something uh, to keep in mind. But basically, we can just use the model builder here and chuck in the camera. So basically, the way the model builder works, I'm not going to do kind of a full uh, description of this because uh, there's already videos out there on this. So you know, I don't want to reinvent the wheel here uh, in terms of what already exists, but we're going to plug in the model builder and let me just make sure our point cloud is lined up here because it looks like our camera is a little bit skewed. So let me just double check this. Yeah, so we have our ground plane. Let's just fix our camera here. Have our ground plane. It looks like our curb is going vertical, so might actually be correct. Uh, so let's just work with it. We'll see. Um, so basically hop into the camera view and double click the model builder and we have this. So what we want to do is uh, we're going to need to line up a point here. So we want to create a uh, plane card. So we'll create a card here we have our camera locked and we're looking through our camera view and we're looking at the model build node and so what we want to do is chuck in a card and it'll create a card like this and basically the way it works uh, we just grab the points and we want to line it up so I'm gonna line it up on a visible point so we have a sort of a dark dark uh, I don't know piece of dirt here and then we can just start to match this perspective so I'm gonna find another point that is obvious so maybe the edge of that rust or something near there and then we'll grab the other corners and start to get it in perspective and so we'll do something like this I'm gonna put it at the edge of the top of the curve the curve is a little bit uh, the curb is a little bit curved so we could be really accurate and model that curve I'm not gonna do it for this tutorial but if you were doing this as a final shot uh, it's something you probably want to do so, uh, you would need to model this kind of accurately 
if you have stuff happening. So you'll see. Um, I'm just going to move this over. Okay, so we have like a, a marker to compare to. So right on the edge of that black dirt. And let's get a marker over here that we can see. Uh, so if I move this point, we're going to do it on the edge of that yellow, or sorry, the red uh, rust. Let's just grab these purple points here. Okay, on the edge and on the edge. So now what we want to do, basically just go to a different position in the video. So we'll go somewhere else. You see it's completely off. Uh, and then we grab the corner and we want to slide that into place. So we want to line it back up where it was. So right on the edge of that black dirt. Uh, let's see if our points over here align and they're off a little bit. So we want to take this point and just move it onto the edge and we can compare. So if you, halt, if you hit Alt, and uh, the left and right arrow keys, you can actually jump between your two keys. It's a good way to compare frames. So we can see in this example, it's a little bit in the rust there. And here it's a little bit off. So we would wanna just slide that over and maybe slide this guy over a little bit. So something like that. Uh, it's a little bit closer. Let's just double check our other edge. So I'll hear we're off again. So just make sure we get right on that point and we can compare. Still a little bit off. So just make sure those two points are uh, pretty close. So this is relatively close. We have a tiny bit of sliding over there. Um, just make sure. So this is also one of the reasons I don't prefer to model build because it's kind of tricky to do the points. It's easier to use a point cloud and sort of model it in Maya. Um, but I think it's sticking relatively well, uh, good enough for the video. And we'll just uh, hop back, go to frame 60 and just double check again. So is this sticking? Um, it looks like it's sticking relatively close. I think the side's slightly off, but um, it might be also a slightly inaccurate track or something like that. But like I said, I'm just trying to demonstrate the concept, so I'm not going to try to perfect this track or anything like that or go back. Um, so this is good enough. So we have this piece of geometry here. Uh, what you can do is uh, switch to, uh, if you go over here, uh, sorry, click off here, and we go over here. Uh, let's just make sure. Okay, so there we go. Uh, we'll hit the edit button and we'll go over here and say, uh, what we can do is select edges. So we're gonna select a couple edges here and then just uh, right click and we'll just extrude them. So if we go to extrude and just kind of pull these out like that. And we'll do the same thing for up here. So we're gonna go to the top, right click, extrude, push these out. And like I said, uh, geometry is not completely accurate here. What we want to do is, uh, if you really want to do this accurately, you probably do something like this, and then you'd extrude again, and then you could push it back. So you, you do a little bit more accurate modeling of the space there. Uh, you can see this is totally off, but uh, I just want to go through this quickly and demonstrate the idea. So uh, if we scrub through, this should stick relatively well, uh, and you can see the concept. So we have this piece of geometry, and now what do we want to do with this in UV space? Um, so one thing we actually need to do is because we extruded faces, uh, the UVs will only be created for the faces that were there by default. Um, so what we need to do is there's actually a little UV editor in, um, in this. So if we select faces, so let's go to uh, right click and do face selection. We can select some of these guys. And you'll see uh, when we select it, uh, just select the face. When we select it, you're seeing the edge selected, but you're not seeing the face. And that means the UVs are kind of stuck underneath there. And that's, like I said, we just created that face and that's why. So we can do, uh, we can drag around here. The controls are slightly different. Like I said, I don't use this very much, but uh, for the tutorial's sake, it'll be good. So other people can kind of, if they don't have the full version of Nuke or they don't want to learn another 3D, um, they can use this method. So what we can do is kind of go here and uh, let's just switch to vertex selection actually. So if we go to vertex selection, 
yeah, we'll go here and yeah. So if you grab these points, you'll start to see that it's kind of stuck underneath. And let's just see if I can zoom in here. Do command drag. So it's kind of a, it's really finicky. I don't find the UV editor nuke that great, but uh, it will it will work. So we can just like basically pull the points, and you'll see that they're kind of double stacked underneath each other. Uh, and then we can kind of pull these out and we'll see that those uh, UVs are kind of fixed then. And that's gonna allow us to work better in uh, texture space. So we have that. And then again, on the top, we extruded some faces. Uh, so we're gonna need to pull these out. And there should be actually another vertice here because we extruded twice. So you'll see that there's uh, sort of doubled up there. So the way I'm gonna do it is like this. So I'll just kind of un, un, pull these out. And I'm trying to make the UVs relative size to the actual size of the geometry. So what I mean by that is, you see that I made this piece much thinner than these ones. So I'm making the UV thin, uh, sort of like that, the same proportions. So if we run a texture across it, it's not gonna uh, stretch. So we can go here and just kind of pull these out. So if you were to do this in Maya, it would be much faster because you can do planar projections, you can do, I mean, you can't do UV projections in Nuke, but um, not, you know, it's not that, uh, it's not that good of a workflow, I think. You know, sometimes it's better to just, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not somebody who believes in sort of just doing everything in Nuke. Um, I use whatever tool is the best for whatever it is. And Nuke is great for a lot of stuff, but if it's some, if it's really fast in another software, usually I'll just hop in there. It takes 30 seconds to import our geo and do it that way. Um, okay, so we have something like that. We've unwrapped the UVs and now we can select these and we wanna squeeze these down into the zero to one UV space. So kind of have something there and okay, that's good. So now what we can do is take the model builder, take the selected geometry and bake it out. So now we have a card uh, in the shape of all of the stuff that we just did. So we can close the model builder, uh, double click the card just to check it out and we have it there. So my axis is kind of weird in the world. My world axis is kind of tilted. I didn't fix it in the track there. So, you know, ideally if you're doing this final production, you want to orient your world, the Y axis with the, the real world, but uh, this will be fine. It's not, uh, not a big deal. So we'll take this, and now what we're gonna do is uh, project 3D. So we'll take the same camera, we're gonna project the same footage and plug it into the image. And now we'll see that we have our curb uh, in 3D here. And let's just make sure our frame range. So my, the project settings are set to that drone shot. So you'll see that a couple times through this tutorial, we're gonna keep going to this weird frame range. Um, but the frame range of this video is 50 to 99. So the frame ranges are different. So one way you can do that is to set the frame range, put a frame range node and plug it in. And then every time you view it, let's just set the frame range uh, to the actual footage. So if we look at the footage, you see when we're looking at the footage, if it's set to input, it's 50, 99. So I'm gonna set this uh, 50 to 99. And then every time I look at that frame range, it's auto automatically gonna jump to that correct uh, area that we're working in there. So normally if you're doing a shot, your settings would be set to the frame range of the shot, but we have multiple different uh, examples in the script. So that's just something that's a little bit annoying, but something you have to, to work with. So now we have this projected out. So now we're gonna go back into the concept we were talking about earlier, which is UVs. So I'm gonna copy the original footage down here. And uh, in this uh, scan line, uh, remember we want to put it in a square. It's just gonna be easier. So I'm gonna reformat it to, uh, we'll say, I'll just say square 2K, or we could do 4K square as well, uh, square 2K, and then switch the uh, mode to UV. So now we have the UVs unwrapped, and we can see that we have this curb uh, removed all the perspective of all the, the curves and everything like that. So what we could do is we could take a roto paint node, and again, replace format, we'll merge it over, and take the brush thing here, roto paint. 
and we'll just take the brush and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a stroke and just draw it straight or kind of straight if I can draw a straight line uh, <laughs> so that's good enough we'll just do a, we'll do a crooked straight line and so what we'll do is we'll go to the start frame of that uh, also one thing we're gonna uh, that might help us actually yeah we, we want to uh, make sure we set the life to all so all frames there so if we kind of scrub through it's gonna uh, go there so what we want to do is go to the start frame i'm going to go to the road of paint node and set the stroke to zero so right on end set key at zero and then at the end i'm going to set the key to one so what is that going to do it's going to make it that this stroke kind of draws down the surface and now i'm going to reapply this as a texture so we go back here again we don't want to reapply the curb texture so once we're done using it as a reference we just want to grab the format and then uh, apply the geometry. So we can put the geometry back on and put the scan line back on. We don't need to set a background. Actually, let's just check here. I don't think we do, but let's just check. Should go to the right format. Um, okay, so yeah, this, this footage is 1080p. So one thing you wanna do is uh, in our Per, in our final thing here, we'll want to reformat that to 1080p. So this is the downside of working uh, with multiple footages of different resolutions in one script because um, if you don't plug in a background here, this, the scan line render, basically all the nodes in Nuke, if you guys don't already know this, if I create a Roto node, by default, it's going to 4K because that's my project size. If I don't have a background plugged in here, by default, it's going to 4K because that's my project size. So I have to plug in a manual reformat here um, because my project size doesn't match my original footage. So, okay, we have this stroke here and then we merge it over and then let's see what happens. So we have it here. Uh, make sure we set the scan line to perspective. So we're going from UV to perspective and now we can see what happens. So we, we went from UV mode worked in UV mode. We did an animated rotor stroke. We just drew it straight down and then we converted it back to perspective. And now the rotor stroke follows the geometry. So if I play this, uh, you'll see that that animation will follow the actual geometry that we've modeled. And it might not stick perfectly. Like I said, I didn't spend a lot of time you saw on the model builder, the track. Um, it's really just to demonstrate. We can see it sliding there a little bit, but uh, it's really to demonstrate how this is useful. Um, and things you could do with it. So imagine if you wanted a, if you wanted to composite a crack, you know, like an actual crack, we could take a texture uh, and crack it down this concrete wall and have it like splitting open or something like that. Um, that's, this is kind of a one way you could do it. Uh, you could kind of have that geometry, get rid of the perspective. And then that's gonna make your texturing so much easier because you can just make a crack that's straight. You can design the edges of it and you're not having to grid warp and do a bunch of stuff like that. You're just working in UV space. So you could put, put a little glow on there and then there you go. That's There's your tutorial. <laughs> so that's basically uh, all of those concepts. Now that we understand, uh, hopefully understand, uh, basically the main idea is just this. If you guys can just remember this, um, go to UV space, do it here, go back to perspective. Uh, that's really a, a really powerful technique so here's the advanced i wouldn't say it's that advanced but it's just something i threw together um of this kind of manhole thing the thing we started with here it's the same exact idea except now instead of just using stationary uh geometry we're actually using an animated alembic geometry so what i've done here for you guys is i've created uh, an end cloth simulation in Maya and I've exported it as an Alembic. So what does this look like? Uh, it just looks like this. We have this sort of, uh, I don't know, cloth simulation. I just took like a circle and kind of turned it into a cloth. So this is imported from Maya and uh, yeah, so we can work with this and bake a projection into the motion. So I'm just gonna walk you through real quick. And if you guys wanna do this project, I kind of set it up here. So um, you have like the three pieces of geometry that this scene requires, uh, which is the animated thing. Um, we also have a 
sort of the ground around so we can do that for some shadows and stuff and then we also have like a tunnel uh sort of uh basically just a cylinder going down so that's some assets you guys can play with and i'll just walk through my comp now and um yeah so we have the scanline render let's go to scanline render so again first things first uh, sorry, we'll go to the top one here. So first things first, we have our thing. And again, uh, projection mode, UV. Um, in this case, I didn't reformat it to a square. Um, I probably should have, but uh, it doesn't matter that much, but it's just better to do it that way. And what I've done is I frame holded it on the first frame. So we, have, we can see that the texture uh, lines up there. So that's what it is. And I've done some paint. So I've kind of removed um, some of the highlights on this thing because I wanted to animate the highlights. So I wanted to make it a really flat texture. Uh, the frame range thing, again, is just the fixing the thing we said. It's just kind of fix it. When I'm viewing it, it just sets our frame range properly. And that I've reapplied it as a texture. So again, UV space, do your changes. UV space, do your changes. Go back to texture space. And now we see that if we play, um, it's going to take a little bit to cash here. I have a lot of stuff. I probably need to uh, actually empty my cash. But if we basically play through um, that texture, that manhole is going to stick now. So that texture actually sticks to that geometry uh, in the proper way. So let me go here. Uh, I'm just going to change my project settings here quick so it's easier for this example because it keeps uh, going to the wrong frame range. So yeah, it's basically sticking now. And what else can we do with this? So uh, the reason this is rendering so slow is because for the final render, I switched the anti-aliasing to high. So if you turn it off, uh, you see we get some kind of nasty edges. So uh, we want to switch that to high when you're done uh, with comp. And it's not even giving us that good of edges there. Um, so you can do some stuff to fix that as well. But uh, some other things I did with this, I took the same geometry and uh, I rendered out a kind of specular pass. So one thing about projections that make them look fake as soon as you start moving them around is that if you move an object around, you're going to have reflections moving on the surface of that object. It's not just going to be a flat picture that just doesn't uh, react to the environment. So one thing you could do is if I step through here, I took that same geometry and I applied a basic material to it. Um, and the basic material has some settings here, like diffuse and specular. Um, and so I just wanted to get some of those nice specular highlights on that cloth as it flies away. And that we can actually kind of just uh, use here. So I did a multiply, which just gives it a little bit of shading, um, basically. So I really should just drop the quality of these. I'm gonna turn off the motion blur and everything so I can kind of show this video faster because uh, I don't want to wait around for that. So I'm, I'm gonna turn off the motion blur so it'll just render faster. And so you'll see that this is actually uh, doing this. Uh, I guess I use this more for like a slight shadow rather than um, the specular highlights. So I did uh, kind of gained it so we just got only get these shadow areas and everything else is white. And then uh, I kind of just multiplied that. So what that's gonna do is gonna create some slight shadows on the inside. And this is where I did the spec map. So here's the actual specular one. It's the same concept. So I have the geometry. Uh, let's plug it in here. So basically I have a the geometry plugged into a fog, which is basically just a specular type of texture. Um, that looks like this. So it's catching all these weird highlights and then I'm masking that through the actual highlights of the texture. So we have the manhole and I do a luma key of the manhole to kind of get the little metal pieces and I just mask that through the fog texture. And what that's gonna do, let me just turn off the motion blur again so we can actually maybe play it quickly. Um, so now that's gonna give you these like rolling highlights on that projection. And it's gonna make it feel more real than if we just if we just project that steel image onto a warping geometry, you're not gonna get those nice little um, moving highlights. 
And that's what makes things feel real. So you can see that uh, something like that is much cooler uh, for an effect. So yeah, if you, if you guys look, open the script, um, it's available for download and description. It's just the light and a fong and the geometry. So you guys can dig through and sort of uh, play around there. So now what do we have? We have something that looks like this. Uh, it's still a little bit flat, but we still have some nice highlights and some interaction going on there. Uh, the last thing we could do is um, you could add some ambient occlusion. So here we can just take uh, a multiply and uh, render out an ambient occlusion pass. So the way you do that, uh, constant ambient occlusion, geometry, and array render. So you can just stack those together and you can render out this ambient occlusion pass uh, and multiply it against it. So you're gonna get those inner uh, self-contacting shadows, which is gonna make it look even more real as it's bending. So you start to get uh, some inner shadows there and it looks better. So that's gonna really give you the ripple effects. And yeah, that's basically it. Um, so we'll go here, let me just double check. Looks like I actually turned my ambient occlusion maybe slightly off in my render. So maybe I could actually add a little bit back. My final render looks like I left off the ambient occlusion. Let's just see. Yeah, I might have actually taken off the ambient occlusion because I thought it was a little bit much. Um, it looked sort of like making it look a little bit mushy. Um, so, you know, you could take the ambient occlusion and like play it way down. Um, or something like that might be nice. Some slight ambient occlusion there. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. Uh, the other things here, uh, it's just the manhole thing. So basically I just took the other geometry, which is the tunnel. And we don't do any projections or anything. We just use it as a normal um, sort of thing here. And we just apply texture. So I just took a concrete texture. So I took like a concrete wall from Unsplash, which is free, royalty free stuff. Um, I kind of shifted the top because I wanted to create like an edge of where the concrete is. So if you look at like where the concrete is, um, basically what I did here was I kind of shifted it to create like a fake metal uh, ring just to give it some more depth. Because this looks a little bit fake when you have that kind of uh, perfect CG edge. So you want to get that uh, layer of texture there. Um, so yeah, just a bunch of color corrections to make it look like there's some light coming in. Um, and then, you know, other stuff here just to make it kind of more interesting. And, uh, of course you can, uh, do a shadow as well. So I just rotoscoped a circle when that thing was kind of nearby and, uh, fake a shadow, uh, as it's passing over. Um, and then this is kind of the same thing. I rendered another ambient occlusion pass uh, just to fake some more shadow. Uh, and then you get something like this, uh, which if we hit play, um, you know, looks like this. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I don't know if I should re-add that ambient occlusion or not. Maybe it might, it might need it back. Um, might have left it off in the final render on accident there, but I think it probably looks okay without it. Um, I don't know. This is this is the problem with being sort of a perfectionist. You can go, you you see a million different things. This is nowhere near perfect. It's really just a YouTube example. But hopefully, you guys have gotten a lot out of the video. Uh, the script is in the uh, description below. Um, so the reason I wanted to also this video just to end this uh, this video here is I'm doing a much longer tutorial that involves pretty much these techniques and some of what I've described here. And it'll probably be like an hour long tutorial on YouTube, sort of a mini class out there for free. And that's what I'm working on right now. So that should be out in the next few weeks here. And that's going to be really cool. Uh, something that you could put in your demo reel even. So uh, that'll be coming. And yeah, thanks so much. Hit like if you liked it. Subscribe. Uh, that's about it.